always gives us two options. Two options. Psychology of God. gives us two options. Two options. down to give you a gift if you want to raise your hand <clears throat> we got a gift amen amen we are so glad you're in the house we welcome you amen so in this time we also love to pray for the one the lost family member friend or neighbor and so if you have your one card I'd love for you to get it out and we are gonna pray over them and if you don't have one guest services is here and they will bring you one. I've seen a lot of people saved off of this one card. 
come on, I've seen a lot of souls want into the kingdom of God and, and walking in their purpose. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, that you're so big and mighty, that you are the Alpha and the Omega, God, and that you have placed these ones in our lives, God. You have put them in our pathways, God, on purpose, for a divine purpose, God. So we thank you. We recognize, God, that these ones were sent to us. Father, we thank you that their hearts are being prepared right now in this very moment, that veils are coming off, God, that scales are coming off eyes. Their hearts are soft, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that you are the Lord of the harvest and you are sending, God, laborers to them. You're sending ones that were pre-planned to go to their lives and to speak to them the good news, oh God. We thank you, Lord, and we declare, God, that we see these ones in the house of God. We see them free. We see them delivered. We see them healed, God. We see them walking in their purpose. So we call them forth now from the east and the west and the north and the south. And we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you that you are the Savior and King. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Awesome. Well, I have the privilege of introducing Pastor Natalie to come and give us a word of encouragement. Open your hearts wide and lean in. Praise the Lord, everyone. Let's give this worship team an amazing thank you. Wow, we've got the best of the best, surrendered hearts. That's why the anointing comes, right? God is about everything. He's never about a little bit. <laughs> He's about everything. Well, say hello to your neighbors. Just say hi, bless you. This is your day of freedom. Come on, this is a freedom encounter. We started last week and we're going to continue on. Last week I shared with you something about things change when we change our firsts. Come on, now do you hear that? When we change our firsts. And I was sharing last week that my, my lifestyle and diet from, from baby on was sugar. <laughs> Sugar. I did anything for sugar. I was completely an addict. And I didn't know, and it had caused all sorts of horrible things in my life. My left eye had gone completely blind because of it, because I didn't know I had diabetes. Come on. And you know, I didn't know how to get free from it. And the Lord had told Pastor Tracy, her problem is sugar. <laughs> so I ended up cutting everything out, but it was so difficult to not constantly still want it right? And so I ended up uh, talking to the Lord, and he said, give your body everything it needs first thing in the day. So I made these incredible, powerful smoothies with greens in it that I would never eat, you know, on a plate. <laughs> everything went in there, all the vitamins, the nutrients my body needed. And what happened? The cravings went away. Come on. All cravings for candy went away. Why? Because I gave my body what it actually wanted. Well, today I'm going to talk about a second very powerful point. And I'm, I'm reiterating last week's because I want you to really be serious about doing this. You know, if your mind goes awry, then make sure you fill your mind with the word of God first. If your finances, come on. Not just if your finances are messed up. Anytime, right? Anytime we want to set our minds on the word of God. But give to the Lord first. You may say, well, next week is, you know, the first of the month at church. Then I'll give it. But no, give it first. Before you pay any bills. That's what we do. Before the government or any debtors, come on, get a penny from us. We give to the Lord first. Well, today I want to talk to you about giving the Lord everything. Okay, so this is interesting because uh, we all, all want everything Jesus has to offer. We do. He's our healer. He's our savior. He's our deliverer. He's our shield. Come on. He is our warrior. He's our priest. He's so many things. I, I Just today I was looking up. Over 50 different names that Jesus carries in the Bible. And they all benefit us. But it's interesting because the world even wants everything Jesus has to offer. Yeah, give me that. Give me love. Give me forgiveness. But Jesus says that, yes, I give you everything. And it is all free. 
but I'm also asking you to give everything, right? I always say that it's a life for a life. You can't hold on to the world and have Jesus, right? Pastor Tracy always used examples of our children when they were little, you know, in order for us to give them something, they had to drop their toy. Come on now. If we wanted them, to, you know, you've seen those videos maybe on, on YouTube when, when a child uh, said, you know, they're told, you can grab as many candies from the jar as you, as you want. And they put their hand in there and then it's stuck. Because they want all of them, right? They want all of them. And so they have to let go in order to get some. <laughs> so funny. Well, the Lord expects us to let go of everything. The world, come on, our entire life in order to have everything that he is. Maybe you're wondering, why am I not getting the results of my faith? Come on, I've asked the Lord that before. Why am I not getting the results of my faith? And the Lord would just say, lay down your life. Lay down your life. Let go, you know. I was fighting something in my body, and I had just, you know, what happens? You get a, a commercial suddenly that is the solution to whatever you want to fight in faith. And I was like, that sounds really good and easy. It's probably very natural and good. So I bought it, and then I just couldn't get healed. And the Lord said, you have another option. I don't do other options. So I put it in the trash. I never took it. I just threw it in the trash. Come on. And that's when the power of God started to touch my body. Now, this is a challenging, most challenging message any preacher can preach. Come on, die, right? Die. I had a dream one time, not too long ago. I was, I was in the ocean, and I was so happy to be dead to my old self and alive in God. And I was smacking the water. And I was telling the people on the shore, come and die, come and die. <laughs> and in my dream, I'm so confused why they didn't want what I had. Because it doesn't sound good at all. Right? Who wants to die and then, and then receive, hopefully, something that's much better? But I, I want to let you know that Jesus is the truth. He's the only truth. He's the only way, come on, to the Father. And, and I want to tell you, uh, read, read just a couple of scriptures of what Jesus says about this. Matthew 28, verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the, the Holy Spirit, of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Discipleship is about obeying Christ and following him. Then he says in Mark 8, verse 34, he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. You got space in your heart for one more? <laughs> Luke 14, verse 25. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and sister, brothers, uh, uh, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. These are hard words. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Cannot be just like me. That's a disciple. One who is just like me. One who has the life that I live. Come on. The power that Jesus has. The authority that Jesus has. The, the help that Jesus has. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost and see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay down the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying this person began to build, but wasn't able to finish. Uh, the world says, says that about Christians. They're, they're no different, right? They just have a crutch. I have my crutch, some alcohol. They've got Jesus, right? 
People used to tell me that in Amsterdam all the time. So happy they pat me on the shoulder. Happy you have your, your crutch. I have my crutch already. Thank you very much. But there's power in the lives of those who truly surrender wholeheartedly every part of our lives. Suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he's able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he's not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same very way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? If it, it is fit neither for, the, for soil nor for the manure pile, it is thrown out. Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. Uh, the kingdom of God is so powerful. And as the team was singing so wonderfully, that we believe because we have seen all over the world we have seen jesus to be the true son of god the messiah the healer the deliverer come on the restorer of anything people have that is broken but it takes a complete surrender to becoming a disciple of jesus following jesus instructions this is an intense word isn't it but he wants to give you everything today he wants to hold nothing back Except he wants your surrender. Amen. He wants my surrender. Every area of our lives. Let's not give the Lord our last and then hope for his best. But let's give him our best. Amen. And then we can trust him for his best. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on. Praise the Lord. That's a good word. Let's trust the Lord. Let's give him everything he requires. Amen. God's good. What a wonderful day in the house of the Lord. How many of you are excited that you came to church today already? God is on the move. He wants to do something for you. And uh, it's beautiful outside, isn't it? It's, it's northwest. I had some friends in California going, man, we're just surviving the rain. I'm like, we're surviving the sun. We're just surviving that sun. Welcome. Welcome again. And we're glad that you're here. Today, I, wanna, I want you to get ready. Um, for kind of a training center feel to our service. If you can already feel from my wife that we're talking about discipleship. How many of you are ready to be a disciple at another level? I think one of the things that I hear the cry of the Lord's heart is, I want disciples. Give me disciples. Give me people who will surrender everything and all. We're going to start with our discipleship in in the word of God regarding giving you know, one of the, I think it's very important for us to change our minds around money and I'm going to read this scripture I've been you know I sent a bunch of scriptures to our staff this week just just declaring to our staff we're going to break a spirit of poverty when we first came to the Northwest we we took over this church and it was three weeks from foreclosure and for nine months, I preached on breaking the spirit of poverty. Some of you would have been mad at me. But for nine months, we went after the spirit of poverty. And we, we literally took the church out of foreclosure and, and 300 times increased the, the income. And I feel like we're in the same battle right now for some of you that are, aren't able to get over to your next level. You're financially struggling. And we want to just see you go to your next level. So you have to accept me not only as someone who teach you about healing, about the apostolic, or about prophetic, but also discipleship should be able to come from me regarding your finances. I think the Word of God wants to talk to us about our finances. So I sent a bunch of scriptures, and I'm going to read. I'm going to read this scripture that just uh, ministered to me. Can I? It's going to be a long read, but you'll you'll, you'll enjoy it. It's going to. It ministered to me this week. And I don't know if it's going to minister to you. It's up to you. It's your mind. It's your heart and your mind. But it ministered to me. And I want to just highlight a few things. In 1 Chronicles 29, verse 1, it says, and this is David, and he's speaking to the assembly. So he's not just speaking to high-level individuals, but he's speaking to the whole assembly. So I think it's, it's apropos for me to speak to the whole assembly about it as well. And he's talking about his son Solomon, who's going to take over 
his mandate. He's going to continue the work. And he looks at ver and we look at verse two, and as he's he's talking about talking to Solomon about the temple and is not the temple is not built for man, but it's built for the Lord. How many you know this this church is not only built for you, but it's built for God. It's called the house of God. We want you to know we're building a house for God. We're not just building a church for people. And it's kind of a, a it's kind of a challenging thing to do in this modern day because most people think the house of God should be for them. And that's just where we, where God comes and takes care of your needs. But the house of God was never meant for you. The house of God was for you to have an engagement with God, for you to connect with God first and then develop influence into your needs. So verse two, it says, from uh, now for the house of my God, I have prepared with all my might. And, and I think I shared on this a few months ago, how, how someone can prepare an offering with all their might. I think it's amazing. We want to have the heart after God like David, but David shows us the secret to his heart. Everything he did, he did for God with all of his might. All of your might means all of your heart's in it. And I'm not expecting amens yet, but I, but I want just, a, just some of you, uh, just a couple of you would be fine. If I just had an amen corner, just a front row, amen corner would be absolutely amazing. Look what it says. He says, and now for the house of God, my God, I have prepared with all my might. Now, this is his might. Gold for things that are made of gold, silver for things that are silver, bronze for things that are bronze. So everything had a, 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 a reason to be, a purpose behind it, and a specific metal associated to it. And these weren't just metals, these were precious metals. So when you do something with all your might, you do it with, with, with a planning and a strategy and a purpose and make it precious. All right, that's not what I'm preaching on. But I want you to know, I want you to see. Verse, verse 3, this is just how my, my meditation was this week on this. Moreover, because I've set my affections. The first thing we see, he did it with all his might. The second thing we see, he set his affections on the house of God. Are you actually passionate about your church or do you just come to this church? Are you actually like, are you actually like affectionate towards it? Are you affectionate towards the Citadel Church? I'm not talking about just the overall church, the body of Christ. We should, but you should be affectionate towards the church you go to, wanting to see it grow, wanting to see it prosper, wanting to see it be a beacon on the hill to those that are broken, wanting to see it, desiring, having an affection in your heart towards the house of God. He said, I have an affection in my heart. And because I'm affectionate towards the house of God, I have given to the house of my God over and above what I prepared for it. When you, when you set your affections on something, you give it more than what it asks for. It's amazing. If you actually were able to see what happens behind the scenes, the people that lay down their lives, one thing that you have to understand, and the people that work closely with me, I have looked them in the eyes and I said, I need you to lay your life down for this. You can ask every one of them. I'm not asking you to come to church and be a, just a part of the church. If you're going to be on our team, our leadership team, I'm asking you to lay your life, your life down for the kingdom of God. Give your life to the kingdom. Amen. Because I have an affection towards him. I've given to my house over and all what I prepared the, for the holy house, my own special treasury of gold and silver. How many of you know I stopped right there? I said, God, I need my own special treasury. I need my own. I, I mean, some of you don't look at your bank account and you could never call it a treasury because it doesn't have enough zeros. But you need to ask God for a treasury. I'm waiting for someone that says, yes, Lord. Okay. I'm asking God for my own treasury because I want to give over and above what I prepared. This year, I've asked the Lord to give me over and above what I have prepared to give, a special treasury. I, and So I'm not going to read all the in-between. Let's go down the verse. Let's go down the verse 5, to, and it says, in for, gold for things of gold and silver for things of silver and all kinds of work to be done by, my, by the hands of craftsmen. I started calling into the church, Lord, send those that are craftsmen, those that are, those that are skilled in what they do. We are so thankful for those that want to come and just help, and we want you to come and help and bring your skill. But bring those that are skilled and bring them that are craftsmen. I started calling in leaders for the next level. The Lord showed me the map of the United States, and he said, Tracy, you're just only busy right now in the Northwest. But I have, I mean, he, he, list, he pointed out 
we're working on LA, we're working on Orange County, we're working on DC, and he said Boston and New York, and I want you to also go into Florida. And, and, I mean, he's, and then he started point. I mean, I'm telling you, you don't have a mandate that I'm feeling. I'm feeling this mandate, this pressure from heaven that we need to get busy, not alone, the whole idea. I'm praying for you, and I'm standing there praying for you today in the middle of miracle prayer, and I'm thinking, Lord, you're raising up these, these, cre these creatives, and Lord, we're building platforms for the creatives so that we can have a voice to the nations of the world. Lord, we need billions of dollars, not hundreds of dollars, not thousands of dollars. We need billions of dollars, billions of dollars. The, the series that I'm working on and writing a series right now is going to take millions of dollars just to launch, just to get it started. That's just to carry a message, let alone the buildings that need to come associated with all of these things. It takes $150,000 just to sneeze at a church plant. 1.5 to get it off of its feet. So we believe for you to have treasuries. And if you don't want it, that's up to you, but it's for me. I want it. Look what it says. He says, silver and for all the kinds of work to be done by the hands of the craftsmen. Who then is willing? He's now asked this question. Who then is willing to consecrate himself to the Lord this day to the Lord? Now I thought, well, they, they, he's calling for prayer. This is what I thought when I read it. He's calling for prayer. But then he goes on and he, say, he breaks down. And you see the way they consecrate. Consecration is not just that you say, Lord, you have my heart. But God says, if you were giving me your heart, then give me your hand. You don't give the Lord your heart until you give him what's in your hand. Do you know in Hebrew, you cannot say thank you to someone without giving them a gift? We have a culture that we say thank you to people and we don't ever give them something. But that's not, the, that's not the culture in Hebrew. The first mention of the word thank you is with a gift in exchange. You guys have got quiet on me. Okay. All right. Verse 6. Someone say consecrate. This is what it looks like to consecrate. Verse 6. Then the leaders. I started, call, talking, I started praying for my leaders. Then the leaders of the father's houses. Now, this is not just for our leaders, but this is the, the leader of every house. The father in every family, every man, they, the men were the first to stand up. In three weeks, two weeks, I'll be in, at a men's conference. We'll have nearly, we'll have at least 3,000, maybe 4,000 men, all men. And the challenge is, is the goal is, is that the men would be the first to stand up. Here he says, the, the, he doesn't even call them men. He says, the leaders of the father's houses. Leaders of the tribes of Israel. That's next, the tribes. Then the captains of thousands, and that's the leadership levels, and captains of hundreds, and then officers over the king's work offered willingly. How do you consecrate yourself? You offer willingly. I'm not going to go into the rest of that. Read it. Read it. I wanted to challenge you today with another level of consecration. Don't draw near to him with mouth, mouth service. We're talking about discipleship today. But grow in your consecration by the thanksgiving that you're able to give him. Amen. God bless you as you give today. Amen. We are a generation of kings that are raised up in this hour. You have more authority than you know. Good morning. Welcome to Citadel Church. My name is Misha. And I'm Donea. And these are your weekly snaps. Is this your first visit to Citadel Church? We have a gift for you. Please pull out your phone, focus your camera on the QR code on the screen, and fill out our Connect card. Need some assistance? Stop by our guest relations table after service. It's simple to give to Citadel Church. Take a look at the slide on the screen and choose what works best for you. Thank you for supporting Citadel Church through your tithes and offerings. Ladies, reigning women meet next Friday, April 19th at 7 p.m. at the Residence Inn in Bellevue. Pastor Natalie will be sharing the fourth pillar of reigning. Don't miss it. 
Membership classes start soon. Learn more about Citadel Church's culture. Scan the QR code on the image or text MEMBER to 206-567-1400 to sign up. All men are invited to prayer on Tuesday mornings at 7 a.m. on Zoom. Find the link to join on the Citadel Church app. Click on Events, then Men's Prayer. Tune into Curology on Tuesday evening on Citadel Church's Facebook or YouTube page at 7 p.m. Pastors Tracy and Natalie always have fresh insight on healing principles. Citadel Church Zoom healing rooms take place directly after Curology. Make an appointment by texting HEALING to 206-567-1400 and follow the prompts. You can reach any of our ministries by texting one of these keywords to the number 206-567-1400. Are you interested in learning more about choosing obedience and worship in every season? Pastor Kelsey Titano has a series that you can access on the Citadel Church app or Citadel Church YouTube page. You can also scan the QR code on the screen to access. Check it out. Download the Citadel Church app today at your favorite app store. Check out the sermon notes for today by clicking on connect at the bottom of the homepage. Then click services and today's date. Finally, click on click here for sermon notes. That's all the announcements for this week. Thank you for joining us and have a great day. Thank God for the two cents and three, but, you know, we, we need to actually move this thing forward. He goes like, amen. I'm just going to tell you how it is. Amen. Praise the Lord. W Rainy women, this Friday, don't, don't forget if you are a woman of the Lord and you want to grow and you want you, you to get out with the ladies, uh, there's powerful words. I, every time my wife comes back from Rainy Women, I'm like, what happened? I'm like, she, she's just mad, just ready to go. And she has so much to tell me. And this happened, and this word of knowledge happened, and this person was healed, and this is the word, and these were the visitors. And so um, the, it's, it's, it's a growing ministry. My, uh, my wife has an anointing along with uh, the team, have an anointing to reach the world. And uh, it's just a practice zone in my mind. Of course, she's effectively bringing change. But the world is calling for her, and she's, she, she actually is really interesting because she's this week is either has or already, she turns down stuff. No, I'm not going to preach there. I don't want to go preach there. She doesn't go and preach everywhere because she just doesn't want to. She preaches where she wants to or where the Lord leads her, and uh, she, she loves talking to the reigning women. It's like her passion. So don't, don't, uh, I mean, I, I, want you to t I want you to hear this because I want you to take advantage of it. While other people are asking her to, to come, and she's like, I don't have time. I don't want to. I don't feel like the Lord wants me to. She wants to be with you. I, I, don't, I don't know if you capture in what I'm saying. So take advantage of it. Take advantage of it because there is going to be a short time. The prophetic words that keep coming to her is that she is, is, going to be on in demand and the the demand is increasing i mean jeremy was like you got to come i'm i'm going we're going down in may and she we're doing an app a five-fold ministry lab with jeremy and miranda and he's like natalie you have to you have to be a part of it she's just like you know i just she loves her army are you guys hearing what i'm saying she loves her army and if it's not building her army, she doesn't, you know, she's not. All right. But soon, 
her army is going to be too big for Seattle. It will. It will. Millions, millions. The Lord told her, gave her a prophetic word, a million of women in her army. And, and we're, we're, we're building up the, uh, she is building up the, 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 the captains and the leaders. Amen? Amen. All right. I'm just bragging too much. Okay. It's all right. Um, there was something else on the board I was supposed to say. Anyway, I don't know what it is. Oh, don't, don't, don't forget, we're in a series spring cleaning. Clean out yourself. I, you thought I was talking about your garage. There may be a part of you that's a garage. <laughs> your head's a garage. I don't know. It's all depends what you keep in your garage, right? Um, but you want to make sure you, you stay clean. And we're in that series today. And today I want to talk to you about the second aspect. Last week we talked about the, the, the upper court. There's an outer court. If we can put up that picture of the temple, it has uh, several pieces of furniture there. There's an outer court, and then there's an upper court, and then there's a holy place. And so uh, if I can go back here, there's, this is the outer court, the great court. Out in the great court is where the Gentiles were allowed. When you see Jesus coming and he's kicking the, he's kicking the, the money changers out. I mean, you read that story. He's kicking the money changers out. He's turning things upside down. That's happening in the outer court. That's where the, the, the Gentiles can come. And what they were doing in that outer court is they were selling offering. They were selling offerings. They were selling pigeons and turtle doves, and they were selling because if you, sh- if you showed up and you didn't have an offering, you needed one. So that's good marketplace, supply and demand, right? So they created marketplace out there. Um, but I think in my mind, and I, I, don't, I haven't found the history on it. I can't find the history in it, but I'm that was, that was allowed because only Herod built that. That wasn't in the King Solomon's. That was Herod's. Herod built the temple, and Herod built this big court that allowed sailing, marketing. But it was a place for the Gentiles to come and kind of have. So Herod created that mixture. And I feel like some of it tried to seep into this upper court, which where we talked about yes, last week. The upper court was where we start to purge ourselves. Now, remember... The picture is that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Does it say you or does it say your body? Your, your, now, Jesus says my body is the temple. And so you have to understand your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And in the body, you have different compartments. And we're going to start breaking into the compartments of you. Yay. Starting with your body. So last week, not to go through all of it, we talked about the molten sea. The molten sea was where you washed in your purpose and you, you washed the word of God in your purpose and you put your face into the things that God has set you. You set your face toward. We have the lavers that, that were on the lavers in the basin and there's five on each side. There's ten, which was the number of dun, dun. law and order. All right, see, there you go. Law and order. You guys are a little slow on that, but I, I helped you out. Then we have the stone altar. The altar is, now you'll see stairs on here. There's no stairs. I told you last week there's no stairs. It was a ramp. But, you know, Gentiles make these things. <laughs> and so, so you have an altar. It's funny, when I start to research, I start to think of how I, listen, I, I find Christian stuff, and I'm like, Christians really have no idea what happened. They don't. They're clueless. Anyway, and praise him. So then, so we had that, that, and that's the place where we die to ourselves. So that was all in the outer courts. Now, Jesus went in, and how many of you remember, again, he was flipping over tables, and he was, he was whipping people. He, he made a whip. I think you, do you hear me? I was like, how did he, where did he get the whip? He, he took it from the tree that he told to die, and he was walking the whole way, braiding something. And when he got there, he just whipped him because he just showed up with a whip. When you, when, you, when you can take what used to reject you and use it as a tool, I'm not preaching that today. I'm not preaching that. But if you can take what used to say no to you and take that moment and use it for a breakthrough moment to turn things upside down and turn things around. Gosh, I feel like preaching it, but I'm not. I'm not preaching that right there. So, so you have to understand that God wants to do something. And so Jesus 
was there, and the first day he went and he looked around and it, it said the time was, was not right for him. It, it was too late in the day, so he went home all the way back to Bethany and then came back all the way another day of travel back to that day. That's when he passed by the tree the second day and they saw it was withered. I'm just giving you some background studies before we jump in. And so he walks by and they say, oh, look how the tree is withered. Then he comes in there that day. That day that he's walking in is the day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The Feast of Unleavened Bread is the day that the father takes all of the children into the house and he turns all the lights off in the house and he gives them a candle, he gives them a wooden spoon, and he gives them a little feather. And he says, okay, go through the house and find all of the leaven. There's leaven that's been laid around the house. And they go through it. They have to move, they have to move refrigerator. They move every refrigerator. They have to move the refrigerator, the pots of the pan. They're, and they're sweeping. And what they do is they, you have to do it this way. The children grab the spoon, and they find the piece of leaven, and they sweep it into the spoon with the feather. They then take the feather, and they take the spoon, and they take the, the leaven, and they wrap it around in what looks like grave clothes, a cloth. And then they take it outside, and they dig a hole, and they bury it. They put it in the ground, and then they burn it. Now, you have to, do you see it? The spoon is a symbol of the cross. The cross takes everything in. It doesn't just sit on the cross, but it gets into the cross. The, the, the Holy Spirit is the one that has come and swept it in. The leaven is in, scooped up by God. All of your sin is scooped up by God. I wish I could preach this, but I'm not here to preach this today. This is just a reminder and a review. It's all scooped in, and then you wrap it into the grave clothes the same way Jesus was wrapped into the cloth. Take it outside, and you put it in the ground, not to, co not to cover it, but put it in the ground, a hole that you dug. Then you burn it because that's what happens to your sins. That's what happens on the day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. I wish I had someone that wasn't. That, that, did we, we, we started praying this week against the spirit of lethargy. So if you're falling asleep, you're still under it. Fight it. It's the very spirit of the Northwest that wants you to be a dumb, numb Christian or a dumb, numb person, whatever it is, but you need to break it. Fight it. Fight it. Because the fact is, is God's trying to train you in who you are and equip you and empower you in who you are because the greatest thing, the greatest fear the devil has is a believer that understands who they are. And if you understand who you are, then you understand what is yours and then you understand the power that you can operate in. God has made you a powerful person and the devil of the Northwest can't stand it and he wants you to be this super silly Christian that just has a light foot and a, but now I'm telling you, the king kingdom of God needs heavy-footed people, people who have a heavy foot that can crush the head of the devil. I'm not supposed to be screaming. I'm supposed to be teaching today. Why don't you guys calm down a little bit? Just calm down. Just chill out. Just relax. So we have to go back into that. <laughs> We're going to go into the temple. We're going to go into the temple. We walk through. Two, we go through the porch. As we go through the porch, we walk two pillars, walk through two pillars, Jachin and Boaz, remember that? Establish and strengthen. When you walk, when you know that God has made the very, the very thing that is your backbone is to establish you and to strengthen you. You are not a weak person. You're not a vulnerable person. You're not a loose person. If you are, you haven't accepted the fact that you are the temple. If you doubt that for your life, then you doubt that God has made you the temple. Don't fight God when he's trying to make you something. Oh, you don't know what I'm going through. I don't know what you're going through, but I know what God did for you. And what he did for you and what you're going through need to match. You need to match those. The devil's not going to match them for you. He wants to tell you and build an identity in you that you are not who God said you are. And I'm not here to convince, I'm not here to be with him. I'm not here to be on his team. I'm not putting Barry Manilow on for him at all. I want you to know that God wants you. All right. I'm not on his team. 
So, so, when we walk in, when we walk into the temple, we walk through these two powerful pillars. Inside of you, the fiber of your shoulders and your back, strength and established. You need to say, God, if you feel un shaky ground, if you feel like there's any area of your life that is not strengthened, then call on the anointing of the, that is granted to the temple. You can't even enter into the deep places of God without these two things. All the, the funny part is the Christians that want to be deep, that don't have strength and established, become weird. You guys don't want to say amen because you're goofy. That's right. The ones that are not goofy say amen. If you're not goofy and you know it, say amen. 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 I love Citadel Church. So you walk, you have to walk with strength. Know that God establishes your steps. Know that no word out of your mouth can fall to the ground. I'm not here to preach on established because I was last week. Gosh, I'm need to jump into this week. Okay, let's get into this week. <laughs> I just, I know, I, didn't, I love the, I, we normally spend nine hours on these. Now we're trying to push it all into you in just three days and 45 minutes each or 40 minutes each, 35 minutes actually <laughs> each. <laughs> so the first thing is you, when you walk in, the first, the first article of furniture, and the reason I want you to know the furniture is because the furniture was placed in the temple purposefully. God put this purposefully so that you would understand when he calls you his temple, what he put inside of you. What he put inside of you. The first thing I want you to see is the golden candlesticks. The first thing I want you to see. Now, a lot of people, they start with the incense first. Well, in the Old Testament, the incense, the, the table of, of the, the altar of incense was right at the front door. But in the New Testament, the, the altar of incense was moved to the holies right before the holies of holies. So we want to make sure I'm not going to start with that yet because I want you to know where it's really postured right now in your life. Not then. All right. The golden candlesticks. Let's put up that golden candlestick. Look at this. Beautiful. In Israel, they're, they're collecting all of the articles because they're expecting to rebuild the temple. They're, they're, and so all of the articles, and now they, they're testing a, a couple of red heifers to see if that's the last one. And so they, if they can identify the red heifer, then they'll start building the temple. Now, there's a lot of debate on whether it's in the right place or, you know, or not, because it has to be next to fresh water that is flowing like a geyser. It, in the place that they want to build it, there's no fresh water. There's no fresh water by the temple mount. All right, so you guys aren't with me yet. How many of you want to go to Israel with us? Yeah. Rabbi Lappin wants to do an Israel trip with us. Wouldn't that be amazing? That'd be so fun. Hmm? Meet the government. He'll introduce us to governmental people. It'd be fun. So the golden con candlesticks is the first thing. The golden candlesticks, as you can tell, each one of these, it's seven. How many know in the Bible, when you start to deal with seven, you're dealing with a level of completeness? You're dealing with th something that is not partially done, but something that is completely done in you. And if you look at the menorah that's used in the regular, you know, worship, you know, Hanukkah, it may be nine. But we're looking at seven. The Bible says that in, on the Lord's head is seven horns, seven eyes, seven representing the spirit. The anointing is what's in each one of these. And God has anointed you. For this hour, this, the anointing. So the anointing here um, that God wants to give you is an anointed life. How many of you know that every day you should live as someone that is anointed for the day? Today I'm anointed for today. And tomorrow I'll wake up and I'll be anointed for tomorrow. My anointing is not wearing out as I grow older. My anointing is only increasing because every day there is a, the, the, you know, David said it this way. He always loads you up with his benefits daily. Come on, say daily. Daily you're loaded with his benefits. 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to try my best to get you excited today. I am trying my best. I'm working hard. Daily. So tomorrow you wake up and you hear the sound. We had a, you hear the sound of a, bu- of a truck ba- backing up to your house. Beep, 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 loading you up. Yes, sir. Come on, Tom. Loading you up with benefits. Every single day, hearing that sound. That's my wake-up call. It's time for me to get up and walk in my anointing. Beep, beep. You guys aren't happy yet. Okay. Look at first t- Isaiah 10, 27. It says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wash you with the word. Can I wash you with the word for a second? Isaiah, Isaiah 10, 27 says, and it shall come to pass on that day that the burden will be taken away from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck. The yoke will be destroyed. Are you ready for things that used to weigh you down to be destroyed? Now, God doesn't want you to just be set free. Because set free could be that you can get bound again. But when something is destroyed, it cannot be put back together again. It's, it's actually putting it in such a place that it is broken and crushed to powder. God's anointing on your life crushes things to powder. It breaks the yoke of the old. It destroys it. The, it's going to be destroyed because of the anointing oil. God only anoints what he separates. If I were to take these two, I take these two, you know, let's say these mics didn't have the, the yellow on them and they were the exact same mic, these mic stands, and I would say this one right here, like there's, this mic is actually anointed for my wife and I. No one else uses this mic except for my wife and I. It's anointed. If, if you use it, you get struck down. <laughs> Isn't that right, Don? If you get, it means like, what happened to him? They touched the wrong mic. This mic was anointed. Do you remember when David was, was, was being challenged to go and, and the Lord says, don't touch my anointed? It was God that put his anointing on Saul. David couldn't touch him. David can kill anybody else he want, but he couldn't kill him because God separated him for himself. You need to hear what I'm saying to you. If I put an anointing on this and I say this is only used for Pastor, Pastor Kelsey, then you cannot touch it. It is only for her. You can touch this one. This one has an, doesn't have an anointing. You can kick it. You can throw it. You can do whatever you want because it's not anointed. But the moment if something is anointed, then God fights for it. The moment something's anointed, God says, how dare you try to touch my anointed? How dare you try to come upon my anointed? The anointing is for me to use. You cannot use her. You cannot use this. You cannot use that person because that anointing is only for me. I wish I had someone that said, yes, I'm anointed. When you're anointed, nothing can touch you except for God. And if you don't realize you're anointed, you will never, ever stand and say, you cannot touch me. Can't touch this. Da, na, 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 uh, uh. I I can't touch this. You got to know you have some, I can't, you can't touch this on me. I was, I wasn't, I was, I was trying not to get fully into it because then I'd be partying all day. I was just like, "Eh." because once I start dancing, I can't stop. You just, it's true. I'm just, once I get started, I just, it just doesn't turn off. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be everywhere just like twitching and like. It's just, it just, it is. I just can't, can't, can't stop that feeling. (laughs) How many of you know that you're anointed and separated? That the devil can't just do whatever he wants with you. He can't just come and touch you and use you and put every whatever. How many of you feel like you're anointed? Come on, let me hear you. How many of you know that the anointing of God is on your life, that he can't just do whatever he wants to do? So that anointing is destroying what used to touch you. James chapter 5, 13, 14 says, is, is anyone among you? This is, just the, this is just the first aspect. This is just the, 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 the candlesticks, anointing. And James... 13, it says, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. And is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. And if anyone among you is sick, let him call for the elders of the church and let him pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. When you know the anointing can break sickness, you should be anointing each other in your house as often as you can. Whenever someone's struggling with something, get the oil out and remind the devil that this person is anointed, you cannot put your hands on them. 
Sickness is the devil's hands all over your body. The devil's footprints, fingerprints, tag signs. He's been tagging the side of the building. All right, you guys are mad at me. But that's okay. You need to know the anointing on you reminds him that he can't touch you. So get the oil out. When someone's in my family, like my wife brings me the oil, someone needs to be anointed or I'll grab the oil, someone needs to be anointed. It's not just some kind of ritual. It's a reminder and an establishment that God has given strength and establishment right here that the kingdom of God is here nothing else is here. 1 John 2, 20, verse says this, it says, verse 20 says, but you have the, an anointing from the Holy One. From the Holy One, the one, and ho- the one and only Holy. You have an anointing from Him. You have His anointing. Can you, I asked someone, I said, if I told you that you could climb up a mountain, we can go up a mountain, and we can spend five days climbing up a mountain, we sit up in the top of the mountain and talk to the Dalai Lama. Because people do that. And they, because they want to hear from him. But I'm like, you have the Holy One. Can't you get up a couple minutes early and just tap in some of that? The anointing from the Holy One, and you, now this is the powerful part of the Holy One anointing you know all things. You know, the Lord doesn't, he's, he doesn't have to open a book on anything. Let me, let me research that. He's not like a judge on the earth where he has to go and research the article. This article came directly from him. How many of you believe that if you tap into God, you will know everything you need to know? That you can wake up in the morning and then get a download of revelation and insight every single day to know what you need to know for that day. All right. Okay. I'm just showing you promises in the scriptures that if you chose to pray these, your life would change. 1 John 2, 27. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. Where is it? In you. And you do not need that anyone teach you. There's some things I can't teach you. There's some things I can teach you based upon my experience. There's some things I can teach you based upon my study. But do you know who you are and what God's called you to do is bigger than what I could teach you? There's some things that the, only the Holy Spirit can teach you. The anointing. And you need anyone to teach you, but the same anointing teaches you concerning all things is true. Acts chapter 10, 38, and God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Spirit and with power Amen. Let's go down to some other. Let's go to he, um, let's go to Second Corinthians one twenty two twenty one one twenty one. I'm going to start at verse twenty actually. Second Corinthians one verse twenty. For all the promises of God in Him are yes, and in in Him Amen. And to the glory of God through us. Verse twenty one. Now, how, how does that? Let me just stop there because I, I want I'm trying to hurry because there's so much and I have like minutes left. How can this be the glory of God in us, to the glory of God through us? How can that happen? When you start to tap into the promises that God says yes to, it should change your life, and people should identify that God is in your life. People should see that there's a notable difference about you, that there's something different about you. The way that you walk, the way that you talk, the way that you live, the way that you faith, the way that you believe, the cars that you drive, the houses that you, I know I'm going to go there, see, because I want you to get a bigger mind about your life. I don't want you just to think the spiritual life that God wants to give us. I believe that God wants to excel you in life. And I feel like there's, I need permission from you to be able to be able to challenge you to go bigger. Go bigger. All right. And now in verse 21, and now he who establishes us with you in Christ has anointed us in God and also has sealed us and given us 
the, the, the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. You know that seal? You ever, you ever get something from the store and the seal is broken? Oh, I can't stand it. I'm like, no, it's not going to happen. Not today, Satan. <laughs> I'm like, it, I'm, you can pray over it. No, I ain't. Uh-uh, I'm taking it back. <laughs> you pray over it. You want to. I don't have to use my faith there. I want to just use my money in my receipt. I want to use my receipt. Uh, someone drank out of this before I got it. We don't do this. All right, so I don't even know when he says he sealed you, he's closed you up. It's a seal. And literally, if we were to talk about Hanukkah, the Hanukkah season is really about how all how the Gentiles went into the temple, tore up the temple, broke everything. And when the Jews wanted to reinstitute the, reinstitute the worship, there was only one bottle that they found of oil that was sealed. The rest was contaminated because all they had to do, they didn't even have to pour it out. All they had to do is open up the seal and that, 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 um, that oil was contaminated. Everything was in it was contaminated. Even if they didn't do anything, it wasn't sealed. Can I tell you, you're sealed. You are not contaminated. You are not contaminated. You're not funky. You're not nasty. You're not... I, want to, I just want to just slap all the stuff that the enemy would want you to, to, to think. I want you to know that you are not unclean. You are sealed. Because the Holy Spirit is in you, God has sealed you and has put the Holy Spirit in your heart to guarantee. Hebrews 1, 9, and you, you have, you, and you have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness, therefore... Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness. Now, I want you to know God is very competitive. You don't think he is, but he is. You don't write more than unless you have a competition in you. God wants you to feel like he is for you and that you are truly his favorite. We have a staff member. Whenever she starts talking on our staff, She's always telling us how she is God's favorite. And I'm like thankful for that, but I'm actually truly going, I'm glad you're his favorite because I am also his favorite. And I like working with the favorites. How many of you believe that you're God's favorite? You've got to, I mean, listen, the people that get the most done always say how much they're God's favorite. The people, I remember when we were in Rainer Valley, and I was, I was little, God started talking to me about Romans chapter 11 and how there was a, 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 a oil that was flowing into the root system that was, that was from the Jewish roots that was flowing into the church. And it, in, the Bible called it the fatness. And, and I was like, I don't know what this fatness is. No one's ever told me about this fatness. What is this fatness? And of course, the word fatness is the word anointing. It's that same substance. And I was like, what's this fatness that the Jews have that I'm supposed to receive? And then I started studying the you know, Jewish mind. And, and I realized that the one thing that you will hear from them always is that they are God's children. And because they're God's children, everybody else is, is inferior. <laughs> okay, you guys don't hear me. And I, so what I did is we were, we were meeting 5 o'clock in the morning for prayer in, in the building there in Rainier, and I said, God, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce God, these people into God being God's children. And I just start, you are God's child, and I want you to feel elitist from it. I want you to feel like David did in front of a Goliath. He felt elitist. He felt like, how, <laughs> who in the world do you think, I mean, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Do you not know? You defy the armies of the chosen people. And the church has lost this aspect of our fatness. I'm God's favorite. I'm God's chosen. I can't go further into that, but I want you to know, he says he wants to anoint you with oil of gladness more than your companions. You should be walking around, all your companions going, 
What's so funny? I'm more anointed than you. <laughs> Don't get mad at me. I'm God's chosen. <laughs> Do you know when you choose stuff, I, I, like, I like to go... If I go shopping, I, I like to go shopping. I actually like to sh- go shopping. My wife doesn't like me to go shopping. I like to go shopping. I think I take a long time shopping. Because I look at the shelf and I'm like, you know, I, I'm really, I, I have a lot of choices. And I like to see what the choices are. I like to go where, like, picking out grapefruit. Weighing in. Well, why do you do that? Because you always want to choose the best. Now, if God is saying you're his chosen, I'm so glad that someone got it. You, when God's saying that you're his chosen, you cannot act like you're not the best. You've got to act like you are the best. You've got to act like you deserve the best. You've got to act like you are called to the best. You've got to act like you're the best. God chose me. What did he do? He had a bunch of them, and he was weighing me. He said, that's the one I want right there. He sat in me and smelled the new car smell and said, that's the one I want. All right, so we got to get to the rest of this message. Uh, The next is the golden altar of showbread. The golden altar of showbread, if we can show him that real quick. The golden altar of showbread is stacked with, there's different designs out there. I found the one. It's, 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 It's a little bit more Greek than I expected, but... Uh, the golden, the golden, the golden altar of showbread, and so the bread is usually stacked. The bread in the the actual real bread, those look like donuts, but the actual real bread, <laughs> the actual the actual real bread are are shaped in squares. They're they're squares, and they they form into a square. And so, when you have this altar, you have this altar of showbread. You you it's it's represents the manifestation of Christ likeness in you. You have the right to be like Christ. If you're not like him, you're not, you're not accepting your right. It's also associated to purposeful living. And I'm probably going to just give you um, one or two scriptures in this, and, and then we'll, we'll, we'll see. And you can look at the notes in the app to get the rest of the scriptures. Romans 8, 28, verse 28, it says this. Um, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his, who, those who are the called. Oh, is anyone the called? Not just called. You know, you know why I like that we always we have to remind ourselves in the definite article there, the, is because the separates it from everyone else. You are the called, the chosen one, Right? The cult, the, the called according to his purpose. That word purpose in the, in the Greek is the word showbread. It's the word showbread. Now, let me read it again with this. That to those who are the, according to those who, um, to his showbread. The bread of life on show. God wants to show off in you. You know, the other thing I like about showbread, not to get into all the depth that I want to, is that the bread is fresh every day. Your purpose is fresh every day. Every day your purpose is fresh. You're not just trying to, I'm living out my, no, every, every day there's fresh smelling purpose. Every day you wake up with fresh purpose, a fresh reason to live. The reason the spirit of suicide can't have us is because today I have a different level of purpose than I had yesterday. And tomorrow I have a greater level of purpose than I did today. And the next day I have a greater level of purpose because my purpose is every day served fresh. Now when you put that expectation fresh and excited, she's so fresh so fresh. Okay, you guys don't know that. When you understand that God is setting you up every day with a new service of freshness. Fresh purpose. Yeah. Fresh purpose. Now, this purpose should be so fresh on me that in verse 29 it says, for whom he foreknew, 
That means he's planned out the fresh, I mean, he's planned out the menu every day for the rest of my life. He also predestined, he conformed to be conformed into the image of his son that he might, that we might, that he might be the firstborn among many of us that are just like him. Many brethren. In verse, verse 30, and moreover whom he predestined, these he also called and whom he called, these he also justified. Okay, I just want you to know that word justified is very important that you should not be guilty anymore. The, your, the justification of the Lord should take away all guilt, all shame, all condemnation. All of it's got to go. You cannot be the chosen and guilty. But you don't know what I did. I, it's not about what you did. It's about what he did. And if you embrace the fact that you're chosen, you won't keep doing that. He justified, and then these he also glorified. Woo! Then there's a Bible says that, ooh, this is so good, I gotta hurry up. And nevertheless, in 2 Corinthians 3, uh, verse 16, nevertheless, I'm trying to see if I can skip, but I can't. Nevertheless, whom, uh, nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. This is what we're talking about. When you turn to the Lord, then all of the things that were hindrances, are taken away. The Lord, in the, now the Lord is the spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, freedom, liberty. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. So when you look in the Lord's face, you're seeing your face. You have to see the Lord's face, not as there's the Lord. But when you see the Lord, you see your face. The Lord is your mirror. That's what it says. And when I look into the mirror, I'm being transformed into the same, same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Who you were yesterday is not, you can't be the same if you keep looking at the Lord. I'm just, there's so much I want to tell you here. Okay, go, go to the app later. Oh, no, I have to read this one. Ooh. John 14, 19. A little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. Can I just say this? Because he lives, you will live also. Verse 20, that's not what I want to get to. That's just the setup. That's the, that's the unramp. At verse 20, it says, and at that day you will know that I'm in the Father, in my Father, and you and me, and I in you. Verse 21, and he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself. To him. I don't know why people don't believe that you should have encounters with God. If you, if you are loving God, he's going to come and kiss you all over. Yeah, I know that's a song reference as well. I'm not going to sing it right now. But you need to know he's going to come and kiss you all over because he wants to come and manifest himself to you. I don't know if you are interested in being God being manifest to you, him showing himself. That word means to expose himself. <laughs> Okay, golden altars. Two furniture pieces of furniture that we've dealt with right now. Now we're going to the third one. The third one is, is now by the entrance, by the entrance of the holies of holies. The golden altar of incense. The golden altar of incense is a place where you remember that remember the altar, the altar outside, the stone altar, and they they took a the animal, and they sacrificed on that, and they burned it up. Remember, first they bled it out. And we don't, we're not going to go into that depth today. But, and then they drained it. And, right, and, right, they drained it, and then they burned it, 
they take the ashes, the coals that are still fiery, and they bring it into the, holies, the holy place. And they take the, the coals of the burning, the burning flesh, the burning, you know, leftover of your flesh, of your flesh, the, the burning, the parts that have been consumed of you, but it's still like it can, the part that can hold a flame brings it in and puts it on the altar of incense. And it mixes God's incense with your past. The places that he brought victory. The places he brought victory. And he puts in frankincense. He puts the different levels of incense. And when, it come, when the incense touches your old flame, that part that is on fire from your old life, or which, which is the true life you're in now because you are a burning coal for God, puts incense in that room. That room is filled. Now, they don't go, that room is not, it's not like, a, like the incense you get from the Rastafarians. It's not like the incense you get from the Rastafarians where it's just like a little tiny thing. This is a mushroom cloud of incense that the room is filled with incense. The room is filled like a fog cloud with incense. And so your past that's, that you can use and bring a fire to it, and you can put the, the incense of God on it, it will be a functioning atmosphere in the holy place and a part of your worship. I just think that's a beautiful thing. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to go into all the, all the other details of this, but I want, I want you to say altar of incense. So he mixes that incense. This is a life of worship. This is the life of worship that brings glory to God, and this is a life of answered prayer. How many ready for a life of answered prayer? You know, the best way I, I see that to get answered prayers, we always, what we teach here is we teach that you should pray with the scriptures. There should, you should always have a scripture that you stand on, that your way, that's the weighty part. That's the incense in my mind. The scripture is the incense. But you know what the fire is? Is God, you did it for me then. You did it for them. Even if you never personally had it. How many of you know someone else has had the breakthrough? And I've taken other people's coals. And I brought it into my house of prayer. And I said, you did it for them. Not in comparison, not in a... Not in an angry way, but God, you are faithful to do it for them. You can be faithful to do it for me. And now I'm going to put your word on it. And then it starts to fill the aroma, fills the room, and fills my house. It fills my life. Man, I just, there's so many, so many things, so many things. Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Whose good works? Your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. All right. There's a lot of scriptures there for you. Amen. When you came in today, we handed you a, a, a personal spiritual profile. I don't know if we're going to be able to, normally we would take the profile and then we would fo fold it up and we, we would have a cross and we would have hammers and you'd come up and you'd nail your profile to the cross. I don't know where our cross is. <laughs> I think it's in storage somewhere. But what I would like for you to do is to take this home this, this week and go through the profile, just you, and bring it back with you next week. We're not going to take it. You're not going to turn it in. Fold it up tight. Whatever you got to do, wrap it up in duct tape. No, don't do that. Don't do that. But, you know, go through and mark all the things that are associated to your family, could, things that could have opened you up to generational curses, could open you up to open doors. Mark through, and then we're going to have an altar filled with wor workers in prayer. 
And you're going to bring this, holding this in your hand at the end of service next week. And we're going to break these generational curses. We're going to, you're not going to give them to us, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to take them home. If you have a fireplace that, that actually you can actually, <laughs> you can actually put something in, not one of those gas ones. Why is my house filling up with gas? You took the glass off. Put the glass back on. Don't be messing around now. If you don't have a fire pit somewhere, I think, I, I, I think you, can, you, can, you can toilet it. You can flush it. You can, you can do something, right? You can, I want it to be a way. So if you can, if you can, like, you can shred it, but if you shred it, you're going to put it in the toilet or in the fire. If you want to dig a hole deep enough that it will, you can bury it and leave it, you got to destroy it. God wants us to be free. Last week we talked about, you know, the flesh, the things that we got burned up. Today we realized it's usable material in our future. So when you read this, don't look at it and go, I can't believe how much I did. Don't, don't do that because you don't, that brings guilt to you. This is not about bringing guilt to you. I, re, I realized there were some of the things that my family did, and I was like, man, I can't believe my family was so crooked. But that, that's, that's not the point. The point is, is to identify it so that we can destroy it. Next week, we're going to get into the holies of holies. We're going to talk about the furniture that's in the deeper core parts of you. How many of you are benefiting from this? You're going to go out benefited. But I want, you to, I want you to spend some time this week praying through with the Lord, spend some time talking to him, filling out this paperwork. Can I say it again? You're not turning it in. We, we don't, I don't even want to know your stuff, please. That just means more counseling for me. I don't want that. I'm not even trying to counsel you. I just want to lay hands on you get free. I'm, 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 I'm just joking. If you need counseling, we will help. We will. I will. <laughs> we will. My, my wife says we will. I don't mind it. I like to be a little stronger in counseling, but I have to be nice. Let's just get rid of it here. So make sure you get one on the way out and make sure you take it home and spend some time with it. Be, treat it serious because I believe that I've, I've done this a lot of times. And every time I'm like, you know what? I think I need to, I think that's a part of my family. I think if it, even if it wasn't me directly, it's a part of my family heritage. There's some things that were highlighted and the last time I did it, and I'm like, I didn't know, but they were, when I read, I was like, okay, I felt like that was a part of my family. So I just marked it. I'm not accepting it as something in my life, but it's a curse that I want broken off my life. And I want to live curse-free. Anyone want to live curse-free? The only reason these benefits wouldn't function in our life is if there's a curse hanging on us. And I don't believe that we're supposed to be cursed. I believe we're supposed to be completely free. And if I'm looking at you, it's not because I think you're cursed. I'm just glancing around the room. And so now I'm trying to look up. God wants us to have a good time in him, and he wants us to be set free. Next week, we'll get into the holies of holies, and the Lord will do a great and mighty thing. I feel like we're on a new, on a new season. God has something new. He's working out, and we're going to continue to build with him. Amen? Amen? Amen. If you're online, if you need one of these, I, I don't know how to do that. We got it online. All right, Pastor Nick, our, our online pastor is working on it, worked it out. All right, so if you're online, do the same. Meet with us next Sunday. We're going to pray for you. We'll stretch our, our hands out and pray for you and minister to you that these things will be broken. Get a fire or get a toilet, and we're going to push those things completely away. Don't do fire in your toilet. I don't think that's going to be good. All right. All right. God bless you. Will you stand to your feet? Uh, we, want, we want the blessing of the Lord to come to you. Amen. Amen. God bless. Amen. <laughs> so good. Thank you, Lord.
Well, we don't want you to leave, and we want you online, that if you have not had the opportunity to make Jesus your Lord and Savior, we want to do that with you right now. So with every eye closed, every head bowed, thank you, Father. Jesus, we need you. If you would repeat after me, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Thank you for taking all my sin. Fill me up with your Holy Spirit. Teach me, lead me, guide me into your kingdom, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If you have said that prayer, we'd love to invite you up to, to be with um, one of our prayer team members. And if you need anything, any prayer at all, any healing in your body, any struggle, any, any breakthrough, after the message like this, this is the time. They are anointed. <laughs> they are chosen to pray for you. So amen. So come on down. We bless you. I, you know, I really, I'm one who loves to go back and really watch the message again, you know, because there's so much in it. This, this is a very key message for, for your whole family, but for you. And so I, I encourage you to do that. Go back and watch again. You know, there's so many things that are, are going to come to, um, the revelation is going to come to you and you're going to, things, more is going to be revealed. There's so much in that. And so we bless you and we can't wait to see you next week. We thank you for joining us online. Let us know if this was your first time. We'd like to see that. And um, we'll see you again next week. Amen. God bless you.